Hi, I'm Anna. Welcome back to Books on the Go. Just a quick video today. This is all about the Booker Prize shortlist. Um, I was quite happy with the shortlist. There are lots of books in the long list that I hadn't read, so I really couldn't. Um, it's not fair for me to give my opinion either way, really, but I did love Lanny by Max Porter and Frankenstein by Jeanette Winterson, which didn't make the shortlist. But other than that, um, I'm really open-minded and I just thought I'd update on what we'll be reading for the podcast from the shortlist. So number one, The Testaments by Margaret Atwood. And yes, we will all be reading that. And we haven't been able to buy it yet. Obviously, it hasn't come out. Uh, I think it's Tuesday that it comes out, which is not long now. So I have to clear some space in my calendar. Um, but we're very excited about that. Annie and Amanda had not yet read The Handmaid's Tale. So that was their big podcast confession in the last few weeks. But they're now reading it. I think Amanda was doing it on audio. Um, which she wasn't loving on audio, interestingly, and Annie has been reading it, I think, in book form. So that'll be really interesting, and I think it's quite long as well. So I wonder how we'll go with that, but we're all going to talk about it on the podcast, and I'll uh, report back here on the channel as well as to how I found it. So that's The Testaments. Number two, Ducks Newburyport by Lucy Elman. So... Da, da, da. I bought this yesterday. This is the Australian edition by Text Publishing and it's just as long as the UK one by Galley Bego Press. So it's over a thousand pages. But I have been hooked into this by a couple of reviews. I think Eric at Lonesome Reader and Matthew Sharapa have both raved about it. So I'll link their videos below. And also the Financial Times did a really good review and they compared it to uh, Virginia Woolf and said that the protagonist, who's an Ohio housewife, I believe, is like a wisecracking Mrs. Dalloway. So I just, I, that just drew me in. So I wanted to give it a go. And so I will be reading this I'll, and I'll have to start soon, given that I think it will take Quite a, well, how long will it take? I don't know. Would you say a month? I'm not sure. It. I don't have a feel for it yet, like how long it, you know, if it reads quickly or not. So we'll see. But I'm excited. I'm daunted, but excited. So that's Ducks Newburyport. And then, I, and I'm just sort of excited to see it on the shortlist in that, will it make lots, you know, are lots of people now going to rush out and buy a 1,000 page novel, which on the one hand, it's silly not to do that because it's just like three shorter novels. Like there's no magic in the number of pages. But on the other hand, I think it is for a lot of people just too long and they wouldn't normally read a book that, that, that it's that big. Um, so it'll be interesting. Now, the next one on the list is Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. And I don't know much about this. I've heard good things about it. Um, Annie told me that it was more like a collection of short stories and that I wouldn't say that's put me off the book at itself but it does annoy me when the Booker Prize is specifically for a novel um, and this happened with was it All That Man Is by David Saloy, which I didn't get on with at all, but that's another story. But it was marketed as a novel and it really wasn't. It was short stories. And so I don't know why they do that. I'm not sure. Like if, it, if you are going to write short stories, then why wouldn't you publish it as short stories? Other than the fact I know they don't sell as well. Um, so maybe that's why, but it is confusing to me. So that in a funny way, in an irrational way, um, not for any good reason, puts me off the book, but I have heard that it's really good. So um, I'm not planning to read it, but I'll be very keen. If you've read it, let me know. I'll be keen to hear um, your thoughts on Girl, Woman, Other. Then there's An Orchestra of Minorities by Chigozi Obioma, who's a Nigerian author. And this apparently is a, a Nigerian chicken farmer who then goes to Cyprus, but then finds out he's been the victim of a scam. And it has, it's been compared to, or 
has references to Homer's Odyssey and it also apparently is sort of tragicomic but has some mystical elements. So I'm intrigued by that but not feeling like I can fit it in to my reading for this month or the next even the next couple of months. So Amanda's very keen to read it. So what we're going to do is she's going to read an orchestra of minorities. I'm going to read this one, which I think is plenty to keep me busy. And we're going to talk about both of them. So normally we read and talk about the same book, but we'll do a special episode for the podcast where we have read different books. But I think understandably, when you're doing one that's that long, you may not have time to read you know, other three or 400 page novels. Um, so we'll compare and perhaps persuade each other to read the other one. Who knows? We'll wait and see. So that's an orchestra of minorities. So that one at the moment I'm not reading, but Amanda might be able to persuade me to give it a go. Then Quixote by Salman Rushdie, and I may be pronouncing that wrongly, I'm not sure, um, which I think is a modern retelling of Don Quixote. Uh, by Cervantes and I haven't read Don Quixote. I don't get on with Salman Rushdie. I tried to read Midnight's Children many years ago. We did it for our Adelaide book club and that was back in the day where we generally did read the books. It has disintegrated a bit now but we used to read the books and this was one where except for one of us we all failed to finish it. We just couldn't do it. So it's become a bit um, notorious amongst our book club as a big failure for us. But I just didn't, it just, the writing didn't appeal to me. And for that reason, I haven't picked up his later books. And I, I don't know, maybe I should. Um, but again, I'll wait and see. If you've read Quixote, uh, let me know. Is it one to try? Um, I'm not sure. Generally with authors, because I'm so time poor and I have so, so many books that I'm really eager to read, if it's an author that I know I haven't got on with them in the past, I would tend not to um, pick up the newer books, but maybe I could be proven wrong. Who knows? And then lastly on the short list is this one, 10 minutes, 38 seconds in this strange world by Elif Shafak. And I read this recently and absolutely loved it. It's just a gorgeous, gorgeous novel. It's um, about Layla, who's a prostitute in Istanbul, and she's dying. She's been dumped in a in a rubbish bin, and her brain is still working. And so she's reflecting back on her life, and it's just wonderful. She think she's thinking back to her five friends that she's had in Istanbul and also back to her childhood and her family but it's a real celebration of friendship and the friends are really diverse they're some of them from minorities and they're just wonderful characters the writing is lyrical and it has such a sense of place it really has the sights and sounds of Istanbul and the textures and it's just beautiful so I couldn't put my finger on what exactly it was that you know about the book because it's not overly plot driven but I just really loved reading it so I'm very keen to read Elif Shafak's other books now but I'll go back and read well I guess all of them in due course but this one I'd love to see this win the booker I don't know how it will go um, but Annie and I will be talking about it soon on the podcast so I was very happy to see this on the short list so that's 10 minutes 38 seconds in this strange world and that's it. So I'll be reading The Testament, Stuck's Newbury Port, and I've done 10 minutes, 38 seconds. Not planning to read The Salman Rushdie or um, The Bernadine Evaristo or The Chigozi Obioma, but I might. I might be persuaded. Um, so we'll see. And yes, let me know if you're reading any from the shortlist or what you thought, and I will report back soon. Bye. Bye.